All right, we're going to talk about small airway inflammation. My name is Nathan Slovis. I'm one of the veterinarians here at Haggerty Equine Medical Institute, and I'm the uh, director of the McGee Medical Center. But what is small airway inflammation? Well, some people look at small airway inflammation and go, well, that's associated with pulmonary induced hemorrhage, which what we see here is blood in the trachea. Well, that is true. If you have severe enough form of it, and your horse goes through strenuous exercise, you could get some hemorrhage because you cause some breakage of the capillaries because of the acute inflammations in the chest. But before we can talk about smaller inflammation, we need to understand the anatomy of the trachea because that's the first part, one of the first parts of your lower respiratory tract. Your upper respiratory tract, we think of your nostrils, your nasal passages, your throat area, and then you hit your trachea. And your trachea, believe it or not, is lined by a bunch of cells that sort of look like a shag rug. They call it the mucociliary apparatus. And what the shag rug does is literally collect dust and particles. And what it does, it actually moves in unison that can help bring that dust and particulate matter into your oropharynx. You can cough it on up get this little sputum and you'll swallow it. And that's a natural mechanism for clearing your lower airway. It's like an escalator system. So there's an artist rendition of it. You can see these specialized cells with mucus secretion. They trap this bacteria or particulate matter. It could be dust, it could be fungus. And it traps it and brings it on up into your upper airway. But what happens here? Where's that shag rug? It's gone. This is what happens when your horse has a virus. It can be equine herpes virus, it can be influenza, it will wipe out the mucociliary apparatus. Most people think, well, my horse has flu or equine herpes virus, you get that upper respiratory tract infection, they have some fevers, a few days it's gone, and I can start riding again. But you start riding, what happens? They start to cough. Because they have all this particulate matter that's getting deeper into their airways when it normally does not get that deep. And it's because the mucociliary apparatus is gone. And how long does that take to rebuild? Minimum of two to three weeks. So this is where your horse can be predisposed to pneumonia. So you look at the schematic drawing, you got a bunch of excess of mucus gets formed, excess of debris, again, you got white blood cells, and you can have a lot of complications that can occur from this. All right, so what, what are some of the environments these horses may be uh, exposed to? If you're a barrel racer, you can be exposed to excess of dust. If you're in an indoor arena, excess of dust. A lot of our race horses, how are they fed? They're fed in hay nets. And if you look at some of these hay nets, look at the extra excess of dust that comes on off there. These hay nets, again, horses are used to being eating off the ground. Gravity is their friend because whatever's stuck in that trachea is their head is down, it helps clear that respiratory tract. If their head is up, What's going to happen? It's more work on the mucociliary apparatus. If you have issues with the mucociliary apparatus, it's going to cause, predispose your animal to lower respiratory tract signs, inflammation. And the amount of dust that may be in that hay net may be as much dust as if you were sitting behind a tractor in the Midwest as they're plowing the fields. And it can be excessive. And if you look at some of these hay nets, it's, they may not be clean them out every day. You know, the horse eats from the hay net. They may dunk their hay in water, go back to the hay net, get some water on the hay. They may not finish it all. Therefore, you got some wet hay in there. They go to refill the hay net. And guess what they do? Some of the grooms may just put more hay in the hay net without cleaning out the old hay. So then this wet hay sits in there, develops some mold, get excess of mold spores. Again, these mold spores, they're, gonna, they're rarely going to cause your horse pneumonia just from inhaling it, those mold spores can cause acute inflammation of the lower airway because of their antigens on it. So, so horses that are commonly exposed to continuous airborne particulate matter levels that OSHA would consider hazardous to your health. Ed Robinson, Michigan State University. For people, even with a short exposure of time, that's how much dust can be exposed with some of these hay nets. So what are some of the signs you may see for a racehorse? They say it hits the brick wall, Doc. He starts going. 
As he's going down the stretch, it looks like he hits the, uh, he hits the brick wall. Some other things he may end up seeing is difficulties cooling down. Increased nostril flare. Three out of five mucus, the veterinarian may say when they scope them. A coughing excessively after workout. That's not normal. And no energy period. You go on out there, the first furlong, you feel like you got a horse. After that, they just kind of die out. If you have a horse like that, you may want to think, do you have small airway inflammation? Endoscopy of the normal airway. Look at the trachea. Trachea is nice and clean. There's nothing there. Look at this one. Look at that mucus. That's excessive mucopus, we call it. The reason we call it mucopus is I don't know if it's infectious or it's just pure mucus. So we just call it mucopus. It all looks the same until you sample it and look under the microscope. If your horse has this, you have small airway inflammation. Guarantee it. So as you keep going on down, this is the, as far down as the trachea as you can go, and you're going to go into the left or right lung fields. Look at that mucus still. This animal is like the equivalent of having excessive, excessive mucus, bronchoconstriction, like having asthma. It could be severe. So what ends up happening is you get all this inflammation. You got your blood vessels within your lung that is recruiting white blood cells. The white blood cells are cruising out of the, out of the blood vessels into the trachea, into that mucopus, and fighting a battle. What's going to happen to those blood vessels as, as they're activated? They're inflamed. More prone to bleed, can't you? So the pathophysiology is pretty easy. What I mean pathophysiology is how does this happen? Allergens, airborne particles, chemicals. Ammonia from your urine. Excess of ammonia can wipe out that mucociliary apparatus. Inflammation. What does inflammation cause? Bronchospasms, increased mucus production. Then you're going to have too much mucus, so your mucociliary apparatus, remember those shag rug? Well, imagine a shag rug full of mucus. Is it going to work properly? Is it going to move properly? Not at all. So then you're going to get airway hyperreactivity. You're going to produce more mucus, airway remodeling. And when you start getting chronic changes, then you have no hope. You're going to have an animal that's going to be a chronic poor doer because you got chronic changes in your lungs. Just like people who smoke cigarettes, chronic changes happen in the lungs. You can't reverse it. And if your horse is exposed to this for an excessive period of time, the same thing can happen to them. So you look at it. Normal lower airway, nice and dilated. Animal that has airway inflammation, mucus, they're going to get some thickening, bronchoconstriction, decreased diameter of the airway. Again, you're not going to be able to oxygenate your blood as well. Another schematic drawing. As you get inflammation, your bronchial muscles are going to contract. Because what it's trying to do is prevent more of this debris to get into your lower lung. How is it going to do that? Produce mucus and constrict the airway. Shut it down and saying, guess what, particulate matter, you're not going to get any lower because I got that airway shut down. Well, that's not good, is it? That's called acute asthma if you're a human. So what do we do? We can diagnose it several ways. We can do a transtracheal wash where we literally can stick a needle into the trachea and sample the fluid. Fluid should always be clear that you can read a newspaper through. If it starts looking like milk, you know you got a problem. Look at this particulate matter right here. Again, should be clear. You can read a newspaper through. Can you read a newspaper through that? No. Acute inflammation. And again, you may have bacterial pneumonia on top of this. There's other procedures we do called a bronchoveal lavage where we take a tube and we wedge it into the lung and we sample fluid. That's what we do routinely at our clinic for uh, you know, horses that are just not working up to performance, that we can't find anything else wrong. So treatments, what can you do? Environment, decrease the dust. Dust, 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 number one. Ventilation. Some of these barns nowadays, they don't have windows. You know, all you got is <clears throat> your aisleway. You know, there's no outdoor windows. Again, ventilation's number one. Bronchodilators, uh, products like Venti Pullman. Mucolytics, to make it less viscous. Sometimes we use some iodine powder. There's some other products on the market to help Loosen up that phlegm. We take it all the time as humans to loosen up our phlegm. There's some products you can consult your veterinarian on. So the animal can now cough up the sputum. You want it nice and loosened. Anti-inflammatories, maybe steroids you may have to use. Antimicrobials if it's severe, because you may have so much mucus that the bacteria start to proliferate in the mucus. It's a free food source. It's trapped there. Your mucociliary apparatus isn't working, so you can't bring it up the escalator, so to speak. You can cough it on up. 
So why not? Let's grow there. And then they're going to start a, a pneumonia. There's a variety of different nebulizers we use at our clinic. We use it in our foals. We use it in adults. There's a variety of ultrasonic nebulizers you can use to help try to prevent this. We've been using silver products for this to help uh, prevent some of the lower airway inflammation. And there's transporters you can use, a variety of different products you can actually use that the horse can inhale medications. But in a nutshell, that small airway inflammation from uh, Haggard Equine Medical Institute. And my name is Nathan Slovis. Thank you.